The theme of prejudice is prevalent within the Merchant of Venice. Now, on the one hand, prejudice, and especially when it came to darker skinned characters or characters that were different, okay, so of course you've got the main villain of the play, this is Shylock, he was different because he was Jewish. However, you also had the Prince of Morocco, okay, so this is when Portia was waiting for the correct suitor to pick their caskets. She showed an extreme dislike and an aversion towards the Prince of Morocco simply because of the complexion of his skin, okay? Remember that Moroccans are darker skinned than Europeans, okay? So uh, they are part of uh, Africa, okay? Just north of the Sahara. And especially during this time in Venetian society and indeed in Elizabethan society, people who were not European were also seen in very prejudiced terms. They were seen as outsiders, they were seen as others, they were seen as devilish, okay? So the theme of prejudice is used, especially by Shakespeare, firstly to reflect Venetian society, which was incredibly close-minded and incredibly um, negative towards outsiders, okay? Also remember in terms of how Shylock is treated, he as a Jew and during this time in society, Jewish people were barred, they were banned from most other professions and the few remaining professions were allowed to practice in Venetian society was basically money lending and of course they had to make some money off lending and hence why there was interest charged, okay, this is usury, this is uh, what Shylock is criticised by Antonio for practising, however he doesn't have any other way of making money, okay, so on the one hand we can see that Venetian society was incredibly close-minded and very prejudicial towards outsiders, however, Going back to the point that I made with regards to Shylock, perhaps the fact that he had so little options, the fact that he was so mistreated as a Jewish man in society, perhaps he became a villain as a result of this treatment. Maybe he wasn't inherently a villain. So maybe we could also interpret this as Shakespeare subtly criticizing this extremely prejudiced society, which then creates its own villains out of the people that it excludes, okay? The final thing you can also mention is that Venetians, of course, also pride themselves on being Christians. Antonio asked Shylock to convert into Christianity. He was even labelled as the misbelieving dog, okay? However, the irony is that Christianity teaches values of acceptance, values of forgiveness, and Antonio, as well as all the other Venetians, practice the opposite trait, okay? So when Shylock is caught up in the uh, legal laws, when Balthazar basically interprets it in a way that basically means that Shylock cannot extract Antonio's pound of flesh, they then become very unforgiving towards him, okay? So there's also, we can see that within this very ugly emotion of prejudice and within this very ugly theme of prejudice, actually people who are prejudiced tend to contradict themselves, okay? So Antonio, who's criticizing uh, Shylock, he practices the same issues and he uh, shows the same lack of forgiveness that he criticizes Shylock for, okay? So this is an important theme and as you can see behind me, I have selected the most relevant quotations you can consider if you're writing about the theme of prejudice. So let's get started with the first quotation. Now, the uh, this first quotation is tying into Portia and how prejudiced she was towards the Prince of Morocco simply based on the color of his skin. She automatically rejected him, she did not want him to pick the right casket just because he was darker skinned, okay? So he was from North Africa. And she states, if he have the condition of a saint and the complexion of a devil, I'd rather he should shrive me than wife me. Remember shrive, by the way, is a, a priest basically um, giving their followers and things sacraments, okay? So he's basically, she's basically saying, oh, he looks like a devil, but if he is a saint internally, so if he's like a priest internally, I'd rather he basically treats me like a priest treats his congregation rather than making me his wife, okay? So we can see here that she has this extreme disgust of the Prince of Morocco simply because of the colour of his skin, okay? Now, of course, here what Portia's attitude is illustrating is the typical Venetian attitude during this time, and of course, also the typical Elizabethan attitude towards outsiders during this time, okay? Majority of people tended to be very close-minded towards outsiders, towards non-Europeans, and anyone that was darker skinned was seen as somehow devilish. Now, the word level analysis which illustrates this form of prejudice is, firstly, the alliteration of H in he have, also the oxymoron of saint and devil, okay? So the Prince of Morocco is described as looking like a devil, looking devilish just because he's dark skinned, but he, even if he had a good heart within, Portia doesn't really care, she doesn't care about how he is internally, it's all about his external appearance and that's what really repulses her. And then finally, you've got sibilance of should and shrive, okay? So of course here she's being very sarcastic, she's basically saying, ugh, even if he's like, he's, he's as pure as a priest, I'd rather him treat me like a priest treat, treats his congregation rather than making me his wife. I'm just too disgusted by him, okay? So of course this is illustrating and reflecting Venetian society uh, ideas and norms at the time, which uh, it was seen as 
unheard of of anybody of darker complexion anybody any outsiders any non-european marrying a european person it simply never happened okay and it's because they were very extremely prejudiced and uh, very racist towards outsiders the next quotation which you can tie in to the theme of prejudice of course is Sherlock's character and Sherlock then basically shows that you know uh, Antonio mistreated him purely because he practices uh, lending and asking and charging interest on top of his lending okay and going back to the idea that contextually in Venetian society uh, Jewish people were barred from most professions they didn't have a choice but to do some of the few professions that were remaining to them which is for example lending money and charging interest that's the only way they can make money okay and Shylock is angry that Antonio mistreats him for this he states Senor Antonio, many a time ellipsis, you have rated me about my monies, ellipsis and usances. Okay, so usances means uh, when you practice usury, basically lending money and then charging interest on top. And Antonio has criticized Sherlock for this. Okay, and he's saying, oh, it's so unchristian that you're doing this, you know, uh, you Jewish people are doing this. But actually he's criticizing him for uh, practicing usury but then mistreating him and treating him in a very unchristianly manner in other words he's treating him in a really horrible way um mistreating him okay so of course we could say that the way even antonio treats shylock and the way society at large treats shylock is also a, cr a criticism a subtle criticism on venetian society they were supposedly christian but they were acting in a very unchristian way towards shylock in how badly they treated him the word at level analysis you want to focus on here and of course we can see that shylock he's being made a villain by society because society is rejecting him venetian society specifically the word level analysis you want to focus on is the words money and usances which belong to the semantic field of lending shylock had no choice but to be a money lender okay the next quotation which ties in to the theme of prejudice is now how Sherlock is, we can see the reason why Sherlock becomes a villain. He becomes a villain because of how badly society treats him and they've basically made him into a villain. He states, you call me misbeliever cutthroat dog, okay? So here he uses the metaphor dog, okay? So Antonio calls him a dog uh, and also by extension, most of Venetian society calls him these terrible names, okay? Because he's Jewish. And again, what this is illustrating is extreme racist views and the extreme prejudice that Venetian society uh, held towards Shylock. They treated him with a lot of contempt based on something he can't control, based on just him being a Jewish man, okay? And of course, here we can really empathize with Shylock, okay? And we can see the prejudice. Also, the adjective misbeliever is ironic because Antonio is calling him a misbeliever not believing in Christian ideas but he's criticizing him and treating him really badly as a Christian and thus he's not really practicing any Christian values and morals okay so it would be one thing if maybe he saw Sherlock as a misbeliever but still treated him with kindness still exercised Christian values of kindness but actually Antonio treats him really badly and he says he's going to treat him badly because he's a misbeliever he's not a Christian so again there's a lot of irony in the treatment of Antonio towards Sherlock he also is not using very godly principles in the way he treats him the next quotation tying into the theme of prejudice is when Antonio basically uh, states that he does not trust Shylock and he states yes even if Shylock knows the Bible even the devil knew the Bible okay the devil was a fallen angel from God okay so and he states and of course again here this is a lot of prejudice because he's basically seeing Shylock just because he's Jewish he's devilish okay and he states the devil can cite scripture for his purpose okay and of course here the words devil and scripture belong to the semantic field of religion again what we can see here is the extreme prejudiced views that many of the characters held towards Sherlock purely because he is Jewish. The next quotation tying in to the theme of prejudice and this is perhaps the most famous quote from the Merchant of Venice okay so this is uh, Sherlock's impassioned plea to everybody and basically saying look the way you guys are treating me you're treating me subhumanly and you, you're thinking that I'm kind of not a human but I bleed like you guys I basically I'm a human like you guys okay so can you not really put yourselves in, our, in my shoes okay and this really inspires a feeling of sympathy within us as the audience okay with feel some pathos now he asks and he states I am a Jew, hath not a Jew eyes, hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, okay? So he asks these series of rhetorical questions which really trigger us to realise how silly pre prejudiced ideas are towards other people. Here we can see that Sherlock is basically asking, I'm just a human being like you guys, why are you treating me like I'm subhuman, okay? Now here you want to focus firstly on the rhetorical questions, okay? So hath not a Jew eyes and then hath not a Jew hands and so on, okay? So rhetorical questions. 
Also, you want to focus on how uh, persuasive Sherlock is being. He's using repetitive language. Hath not, hath not. Okay, so hath not, that's repetition. And finally, you want to focus on the listing of human body parts. Okay, and this is ascendant. Okay, so he uses ascendantic listing. So he lists hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions. Okay, and here what this is just illustrating is Sherlock is a human being just like them. And he doesn't deserve this kind of treatment. And what this is also showing is just how absurd prejudice is because it tries to treat the person who is being uh, made an outsider almost as if they're subhuman when that's not really the case. Okay. The next quotation which you can use uh, relating to prejudice is, uh, now this is specifically tying into another outsider, of course, this is the Prince of Morocco who I've mentioned, and he tries to make a plea to Portia, mislike me not for my complexion. So again, here it's really clear that he understands that because he's an outsider, because he's from North Africa, he is disliked simply because of how dark skinned he is. However, Portia is too consumed with the prejudice. She's too focused on the color of his skin. She judges him purely based on that, okay? Now, the word love analysis you want to focus on here, which obviously illustrates her prejudice, is firstly the alliteration of M in Miss Like Me, okay? And also the adjective complexion. Again, here, uh, Portia takes a very uh, shallow approach in terms of judging his character because of her prejudice. The final quotation tying into the theme of prejudice is when Shylock, uh, when Portia rather, uh, she is disguised as the lawyer Balthazar and she asks, and this is when, of course, she uh, cracks the case, she helps uh, Antonio beat the case, and uh, so this is when she first approaches, she's this uh, supposed very uh, successful lawyer as Balthazar, she's a man, and she asks, which is the merchant here and which the Jew, okay? Now, what you want to focus on, of course, is the repetition of the uh, word the, okay, which is what we call a definite article. The reason why this is important is because think about referring to somebody using this definite article. Sometimes it can be very alienating, okay? If you refer to somebody as the Christian, the atheist, the Buddhist, and so on, this is a really alienating way of referring to people, okay? And specifically, when Balthazar, and, and of course, this is Portia, states the Jew, this is very, very dehumanizing because whilst Antonio, he is referred to as his profession, the merchant, okay, he's recognized as being more complex than just being the man, uh, Shylock is characterized simply by just being a Jew, okay, and of course, again, what this is illustrating is just how acceptable it was in Venetian society at the time, to basically see somebody based on just the, you know, their religious category or the racial group that they belong to, okay? So that's really it when it comes to the main quotations, which I would suggest using if you're writing about the theme of prejudice in Merchant of Venice. Thank you so much for listening.